purpose of the speech is to prepare a talk to persuade a hostile audience to at least consider your position on a controversial issue. The speaker should attempt to lessen the op opposition and persuade the audience that the position has some merit. Demonstrate sincerity when present presenting your viewpoint. Following the speech, the speaker is to conduct a two to three minute question and answer period. So, if there's anybody that's in opposition to the topic I'll be speaking about, begin to formulate some questions that you can ask at the end. The speech is three to five minutes for the, the timer back there, and then two to three minutes for the question and answer period. So, how about if you do the timing for the three to five minutes, Kim, and then whenever we're done with that, as I begin to ask questions, then you can mm -hmm. re redo the timing. And the title of the speech is Reincarnation. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. Reincarnation, the belief that you live lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Now in many cultures in the world, people believe in reincarnation. In the Western culture though, that's not so much so. Only about 20 to 30 percent of the people in the Western culture believe in reincarnation. How many people in the room believe in reincarnation? Any? A couple. All right, we got a good subject. I wasn't sure how this was going to go. <laughs> I personally, the very first time I heard the word reincarnation, kind of shook in my shoes. It was terrifying for me. It just went totally against anything that I had ever been trained or believed. But as the years have passed, I've seen TV programs, read articles, read some books, and even had a sort of a personal experience. A friend of mine was driving in her car, and her little five-year-old grandson was sitting in the back seat. And as she was driving along, she went over a bridge, and she, her little grandson in the back said, Grandma, I died over there in that lake. My friend was a little bit startled, or I should say a lot startled. And he said, yeah. He said, I was standing by the edge of the water, and it was very slippery, and I fell in. And when I fell in the water, my shirt got hooked on a rock, and I couldn't get out. <clears throat> of course, my friend, again, was quite startled with this conversation, and when she took the little boy home, she mentioned it to the little boy's mother. And the mother said, you know, that's very interesting, because in our town, there was an incident of a young teenage boy who had slid in the water and, and drowned. So they went to the library, looked up this article, and sure enough, there was this article about this young boy. It happened to be the uh, mayor of the town's son. <coughs> and as the little boy described it, his shirt had gotten hooked on this, on this rock, so whenever they were trying to pull them out of the water, according to this article, they had difficulty pulling him out because he was stuck on the rock. And they eventually went to actually visit the mayor, and when they walked in the door, the little boy ran over to the mayor and gave her this big, huge hug. You know, is it a true story? What happened here? I don't know. But I've read many other books and so on, and I read this book that I find quite compelling. It's called I Have Lived Before, The True Story of Reincarnation of Shanti Devi. It's a story of a young girl who lived in India in Delhi, who didn't speak until she was four years old. And when she began to speak, she told her mother her thing, her parents things like, you're not my real parents. She said to her siblings, you're not my real brother and sister. I used to live in this town over there. She used to draw pictures, as little kids do, of temples from a, time, from a place that wasn't where she lived now. Her parents were pretty patient with her and very loving towards her, but pretty confused about this whole situation. So when the little girl went on to school, she of course shared this information with her playmates as well. And they made a lot of fun of her. She even went so far as to say, I was married and I had a baby. They used to pick on her. So one day she ran away from home, and one of the townspeople found her and brought her back and encouraged her that you know, maybe someday she'd get to go visit the town where she lived. So he took the notes of what she had talked about, and he sent a letter and found out that there really was a person by the name of the person that she said was her husband, and that he had been married to this young girl, and they had a son, and she died shortly after the birth of that child. Well, <clears throat> eventually, even Mahatma Gandhi heard of this story, and he came and visited this little girl and her family. 
and after listening to the story, he encouraged the little girl to go visit the town. So 15 representatives from Delhi and her parents and little Shanti Devi went to the town, and she directed them down the streets, pointing out different buildings and a well that she had spent time at, and even the home where she lived in before. And the home, she said, was yellow when she was living there. Only the house was white this time. The little girl insisted the house was yellow, only to find out that the new people that were living there had painted it a different color. She walked through the house, pointed out the different rooms. She even talked to the wife of her husband, even though at, their, at, his, at her deathbed, he promised he would never remarry. <laughs> <laughs> and she asked the woman if she would please bring the jewelry box. And she did, and the little girl picked out all the pieces of jewelry that had belonged to her when um, she had this life. So this is just a little taste of why I'm leaning towards the direction of belief in reincarnation. Does this prove it's true? I'm not sure, but it certainly is, in my opinion, quite compelling. So at this time, I'd like to open up the floor to any questions about reincarnation or the stories of Sarah. I have a question. Yes. Why did they make fun of fun of the Indian girl since reincarnation is widely accepted in India. Well, I think it was just the way she presented herself and it was just so unusual because even if you believe in reincarnation, not many people Talk remember about. specifically a lifetime experience in such a manner. So. That makes sense. Yes. So first of all, yes, it's widely known concept. It's not maybe strongly there, but right. it's basically not widely accepted. Oh, really? Because yeah. one reason, and that may be a question for you, why should I care? <laughs> okay, that's a good question, and so that's a question I'm sure many people might ask. And some people feel that perhaps, well, let's just take the example of, you know, we're all supposed to be created equally, and some people are born with a deformity, or die when they're three years old, or, or whatever, and I think sometimes the, the possibility of the belief in reincarnation might have an explanation that would help somebody to process through that type of a situation. Any other questions? Come on, throw tomatoes, guys. It's your time. The idea just scares the heck out of me. I can go back for a Right, 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 right. Well, do it again? Right, exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thousands of times. Right, sometimes. That's okay. Yes. So you were saying in New Delhi they believe in it, but they don't. It's not accepted. Well, I I, I was I mean, not familiar with that except for what what I'm not. So saying. Hinduism and Buddhism, both religion has and even some part of China, right. they have this concept of being a yoni. That means like you transfer from one life to another, and it not necessarily be human life. It can oh, be mosquito. Right. It can right. be elephant or anything. Right. You just keep transferring until you find out the moksha, which is your last stage, and it affects what you did in your pre previous life. That affects your next life. So if you do do a good deeds, yeah, and that's on. where I was expecting right, answer that right, if you right, did a good deeds in your this life, your next life will be good. And a lot of people who believe in this concept of reincarnation, mm -hmm. they try to do the good things in a favor of next life, next better life. Right. That's so, the idea of karma. Karma. That's, yeah. that's what it comes We've back all met to. The you. People that are coming back to recover. And if you think of it from an educational <laughs> yes. process, we all know as a child, say your your math skills, you would keep taking tests until you got your math skills perfected. So that it would be the same type of a situation where you would continue to work on your your personal presentation in the world, I guess you could say, to the point where you perfected yourself where you're coming from a lovely space. What you're saying is that you're learning, like in this life, you're given this lifetime to learn something, and if you don't learn it, then you've got to go back again and start over and learn the same thing over. So or not, not or the same if you thing screw up completely, you're going to come back down here <laughs> as an ant, right? And then you start over trying to get back up. Okay. So the, this is like and the. There's there's philosophy there's 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 in regard to that. There's also one that you flip flop, like one lifetime you're a good guy, next lifetime you're a bad, bad guy. guy. <laughs> it just alternates every other lifetime. So they said, like, you need to find out the ultimate truth, and truth is a moksha. That means <coughs> right. this is all is uh, mortal. 
we can all die. Everything gonna be a model. So finding ultimate truth takes you to the moksha. That means you're not gonna be rebirthing again. You reach to that higher state. And you till then if you're not doing and achieving that level, you will rebirth. Get another all the time. The cycle will keep continuing. Well it looks so like our time, time is over. So if anybody has any further conversation about this, I'll be more than happy to talk. Thank you. Thank you.